What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to episode two of the, what is it now? Like the fifth or sixth budget boxster series we've done here on YouTube. As you guys saw last video, we did it again. We bought another cheap Porsche Boxster. This one I think is the cheapest one yet. I won the bid for about $1,600 at auction, but it had some serious unknowns. It was listed as having mechanical engine damage. It was located in California. We shipped it here, and what do you know, it showed up a little rougher than anticipated. A ton of dirt, grime, and mildew everywhere on the interior, exterior, underbody. This thing was pretty gross. So honestly, my expectations went from like this to this. And after it was redlined to 5,000 RPMs as proven in the auction picture, after sitting for like four or five years, I figured, oh no, this engine probably blew itself up and that's why they listed engine damage. But I was like, you know what? We've had a lucky streak with Boxsters. Why not give it a try? I mean, it's 1,600, 1,700 bucks. Like what can go wrong? So we got it here. And as you guys saw last video, we got it running. And after about 20 minutes of idling and putting some injector and oil stabilizers and all those cleaners through it, it started to smooth out and that ticking noise went away. Perfect. And now we have what appears to be a decently running Porsche Boxer. But as we said last video, this video would be all about cleaning it up and testing it for the first time to see if it runs and drives and how well it does or doesn't. I don't know, we're gonna find out. I haven't checked it out yet. So we've actually already been hard at work cleaning this thing up. It's been a multi-day process. Normally it's just a couple hours and it's good to go. We'll show it on video in like a two minute cinematic edit and we're good. Yeah, not so quick on this one. It was way worse than we thought. So to catch you guys up to speed to current present day, let me roll some of those clips of cleaning this nasty boxster. Whoa, what the heck? Look at that, I look up and there's like a four ship formation of old biplanes flying. Oh shoot guys, look at that, one of them's on fire. Holy crap, I just look back up and it's smoking heavily, oh my goodness. No, I'm just kidding, they're doing like a little air show thing. <laughs> gotcha. but it's time we tackle this mold, stupid leak. It was leaking from right about here because the window wasn't all the way up with the battery being dead. So I don't know, we'll just uh, hit it with some interior cleaner and then we'll go in with like vinegar and just blast the crap out of it. Ugh. I don't know what kind of mold this is, if it's the friendly kind or the not friendly kind. What? I am trashing this rag when we're done with it. Ugh. All right, it's coming off, but that's that's disgusting. So there you guys go. You can see for yourself, this car is slowly starting to clean up. It's never gonna be 100% perfect. It's a cheap boxer with a terrible paint job. The interior, strikingly, is actually looking pretty good. We're gonna go check it out in just a second. If I'm being real with myself, eventually our good luck with these Porsche boxers is going to run out. I keep getting more and more risky with these purchases. You know, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if one of the next boxers we buy that's listed as having engine damage, literally has engine damage and has a blown engine. But if that's the case, we'll just take it back to Renegade Hybrids and do a V8 swap boxer, you know, just like the 911. Here. But anyway, let's go check out the car. Here she is. Honestly, not bad, not bad. Okay, okay, we're gonna always have the paint imperfections, but this side of the car is actually pretty good. Next up in this video, we gotta do an oil change before we go for the first test drive and really sending it because seven year old oil. Oh, yeah, check this out. While we we're going through the car, we found so many more pieces of evidence that this car has been sitting for a long time. Check this out it's a uh, movie theater ticket. No way, $2. Wow, when was this from? Inflation, holy crap. 24 to go see a movie and then look at this in the seat back pocket 
right here. It's a paycheck that I don't know was ever cashed. So this dude, if you're watching, hit me up. I have your pay stub here. 2015, $301 paycheck. And then one other smoking gun here. Check it out. The old oil change sticker saying next service due. Look at this. March 2nd, 2016 or at 129,275 miles. And usually they put it 5,000 miles out. So that means it was done at 124,275. And it's at 125,382. So you can tell this thing has basically been parked since 2015 or about eight years now. But yeah, check out this interior. It cleaned up really, really well, especially considering how it started with all the mold spider webs and grime and mildew. I mean, look at this. This really came back to life. I love the spec. This is part of the reason I bought this car. Not that I'm a big silver guy, but I'm a big red interior, orange interior, and this is the terracotta. You commonly see the silver over terracotta on like the Carrera GT. Yeah, I'm not trying to compare this to a Carrera GT, but it's basically a $2,000 Carrera GT. Bro, what are you talking about, man? So without further ado, before we can drive this thing for the first time, we got to do an oil change because like I said, it's seven, eight year old oil in it. And then while Christian's doing that, I'm going to tackle these atrocious headlights. These are literally with the headlights on, you can't even see five feet in front of you at night. Christian just got the oil filter from the part. Oh, yep. And we need hood struts. We did the fronts, but we don't have the rears. So we're going to add uh, the little motor flush to get all that nasty out of there none of this is sponsored by the way the headlight repair kit or this the motor flush this is available for cheap at walmart and it says you know it gets rid of the sludge and put this in run it for five minutes and then drain the oil and supposedly it helps and i'll take any help we can get on this engine after sitting for seven years to bring it back to life we got quite the concoction in this engine motor flush oil stabilizer fuel injector cleaner marble mister oil like it's got everything thrown at it Bam, there we go, let's start it up, run it for five minutes. Oh, and by the way, we found a little issue, or maybe it's bigger than a little issue. Notice how these gauge lights are still on. The car has been off for like two hours, yet they are still on, and check this out. The key does not lock and unlock the car, and the ignition switch is a little like, it's like stuck. It kinda, it doesn't really take the key too well see like what the heck is going on so i was doing some digging and apparently the tumblers on these 986s are not the best and then on top of that the ignition switch commonly goes out and that could be the cause of the light staying on and the lock and unlock not working so i have one of those on order it's only 10 bucks on amazon it'll be here tomorrow so stay tuned for probably a future video if that fixes this problem but otherwise when we park it we have to remove the negative battery terminal so it doesn't die kind of annoying but at least we noticed it so that we don't kill a brand new battery okay why is this not working literally when we're about to go driving really i'm like shoving it in there oh, what the heck it's hardly in and it turns so something screwed up we'll sort that out later okay fire in the hole three two one oh what the heck all right you want to give me the, what the heck oh yeah you gotta turn it back all right well with the key half in i guess it's good enough to start it all right let's go let the little change commence for starters how does it look under here two and a half liter flat six Looks like stock exhaust. Geez, got a big screw in that tire. Unintentional find here. Well, you might have to repair that. Oil change on a boxer, very easy. A little over eight quarts of oil. We got Rotella T6 here, and then we got the filter and the new crush nut washer. Pretty straightforward. You don't even have to remove any belly pans or anything, just one drain plug. Knock this out 10 minutes, and it'll take me a little longer than 10 minutes to do these headlights. We'll try this. I've never done a DIY headlight restoration kit. This one's by 3M. Again, not sponsored, but it's on Amazon. We're just going to hook up the different grit sandpapers. I'm going to do it by hand, even though I usually say to use a drill. I need to get my workout in for the day. Nice. Oh, it's gonna overflow. Tilt the bucket up. Tilt it up. Yep, tilt it up. What are you doing? What the heck are you doing? 
you doing? Can't go on the ground. Oh. Major malfunction, num nut. What the frick? You didn't have it open? It was open. Are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding me. Oh my gosh. Okay, now what do you want to do? <laughs> oh my gosh. Bam, about an hour and a half later now, oil change complete. And yes, Christian made a complete mess. That was not clickbait, that was not a joke. That was Christian being a complete dumb nut. That was a uh, lapse of focus, you know, paying attention to where the oil is going. We'll have to clean that up, but we'll deal with that later. We gotta drive it. Oh, we gotta check out my headlights. Look at this. So Tyler and I tackled these. What do you guys think? It took Tyler and I about an hour. Like I said, the kit was about 15 bucks on Amazon. We didn't have the electric drill to make life easy, so we had to do that all by hand. So we definitely got our workout for the day. But look at that, they're so smooth, they're so clear. Remember, these things were completely hazed over. Like I said, you could not even see with the headlights on. The final test, flipping on the headlights. Bam, check it out. We got proper headlights now before they were so bad. Look at that. Man, I'm so happy with how that turned out. For a first time DIY, I would do this first drive during the day when it's lighter outside, but I am way too excited to push this thing now that it has fresh oil and see, see if it can hang, see what condition it's in drivability wise. So let's get to it. A little night vlog going down. Let's go for a little ride. Here we go, maiden. Voyage. It's driven only about a hundred feet from where the truck dropped it off to here. So it does officially work. The clutch is good. You know, that's always a big question mark. Does the transmission work and all that? So that works, but it hasn't been out of first gear. So, Ooh, gotcha. Oh yeah, baby. I cannot believe I'm sitting inside this thing. This thing was like kind of sort of covered in mold and nasty mildew just 24 hours ago. Right now it smells all good in here with the mother's leather conditioner. I still no lights on the dash. Just a bare bag. We forgot to clear it. All right, we'll try to clear it when we're back in the garage. Man, you gotta love the LED lighting for the interior cabin lights. Look how crisp that looks. Just kidding, those would be iPhone 14s because I don't know how to make this. Oh, is that how? Oh, well now I got it. I, I didn't understand this. I thought they have switches. You literally push the light the opposite, opposite direction. Okay, well now we got three lights going. Ouch, gas is getting expensive again, $5.59 a gallon. Thank goodness we have the Get Upside app. Once again, not sponsored, but if you don't already have the app, you're missing out. Free cash back every time you fill up. If you use my invite code, you get an additional 20 cents off a gallon. You save money, I save money. They have a great invite referral system, so don't miss out on free cash every time you fill up. All right, here we go, round two. Now with the fresh gas, we can actually send it this time. Okay, see that time it didn't stick the starter. See, and now the key's going in, no problem. So clearly we've got an ignition switch issue, so we'll throw in that part when it comes tomorrow. See how she sounds.
Okay, let's see if we can get this airbag light out. Porsche, Porsche, here we go. Okay, Boxster, here we go. 986, uh, airbag. Come on, come on. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, airbag warning supply, belt buckle, ignition circuit side airbag. Okay, well, erase. Let's see if they stay out. It's probably one of these buckles. These always go bad. Erase goes command sent. All right, well. Bam, airbag light is gone. All right, could have just been a quick erase. Maybe something to do with the dead battery. Wow, we are really lucking out. Drives perfect and the warning light went out. Okay guys, I figured out the headlight issue. See, they're not on now, but ready? When I turn the key slightly to the left, they'll pop on, ready? Right there. What the heck, now they're on, see? Okay, this thing has a mind of its own. Anyway, the headlight dealio is to do with this messed up key ignition tumbler. Oh, and now the trunk thing's back on. Another successful Boxster buy, at least in my opinion, but what do you guys think? Would you have bid 1,700 bucks for this car? If you say no, I think you're a little crazy or you're just a Boxster hater. Some people love to say these are for girls or they're not real Porsches, but I disagree. They are awesome cars. And what do you guys think about the wheels? Should we keep these, what the heck are they? Victor Equipment. Comment down below, I've never heard of that. Is that reputable or are these a good wheel? If not, I have a set of uh, 17 inch OEM Boxster wheels. So should I put the OEM wheels on, which are silver or leave this black? And the other big question, along with the wheels, I need you guys to answer in the comments down below. Well, we have three questions total. Wheels, number two is should we keep the hard top? It's pretty rare, you don't normally see this, or should we go with the soft top, which I think is just buried down there? And lastly, should we pay $1,000 or more, actually 1,000 would be very cheap, to repaint this car? Of course, it's not gonna be like a show car paint job, but like just something to fix this like horrendous paint work, you know? Like this, this is kind of an eyesore, like look at the, Look at the spoiler all faded there. And then the roof is really bad too with all the clear coat peeling. So what do you guys think? Now that we know the car is solid, it runs well, and the interior is like really nice, maybe like an eight or nine out of 10, should we invest the money to make the exterior match? Jay, what's your vote? Um, I mean, heck, it drives great after we cleaned it up earlier today. Right. Uh, I mean, it looks good. Yeah, I think, I, in my honest opinion, I think, you know, new paint, it'll be Okay, really that's cool. one vote for painting it, Christian. I vote paint it, but what color do we paint it? Oh, guys, comment down below. What color? Should we keep the original silver, which I hate silver cars, or should we just go full scent? Like, it's not an expensive car. Should we just go, like, purple, green, pink? I don't know. What would go well with red? Yellow over red. McDonald's. Ronald McDonald. Heck no. Not yellow over red. What do you guys think? Black? Like, what would look good with this color interior? Also, should we throw an exhaust on it? Last, that's a, that's a little bonus question. Should we throw some sort of fab speed exhaust on it? So those are the four questions we need you to comment down below on. We'll see what we do next with this thing. We will probably give it away, so stay tuned to free car giveaways. Okay, so let's replace that pesky ignition switch. By the way, right now I'm contorting my body like a pretzel to get up under the dash. So first we're gonna unplug it, and then we're gonna take out the screws to release the actual switch itself, pull that out, and then replace it with our $9 replacement switch. Tighten back up the screws, plug it back in, and we're good. That's a very quick explanation of what took me like two hours. All right, moment of truth. Okay, battery's on. Well, the gauges are out. That's a good sign, right? Comes out a lot easier. Okay, these gauges should go off. Let me close the door. See, they're on, they're on. Yes! yes. Boom! Guess that fixed it. Wow! Nine dollars off Amazon. So now I can tighten our battery terminals. They're never gonna come to come off again. Yeah, battery's not gonna die now. The gauges go out. Wow, can't believe that worked. Nine dollar fix off Amazon, but apparently it's a known issue. Ours was the original. It was stamped Porsche Audi, and it had the Loctite still on it, which made it a pain in the butt to get it off. But eventually got it after fighting it. And now we're good to go. We'll see if it fixes the tumbler issue. Okay, that turns a lot easier now. I think we might be in the clear. Let's fire it up. Three, two, one. Yep. Okay, and then final test. Will the headlights flip on as they should and not turn off when you jiggle the key? Yep. Staying on. They would flicker when I do this before. Turn them off, turn them on. Okay, boom, and the spoiler works. Heck yeah. Okay, 
I am pretty confident that is why this car was donated to charity and why it was sitting for four years. I'm guessing the previous owner had this issue come up and then all of a sudden the gauges would stay on, the headlights wouldn't work, the spoiler wouldn't work, the doors wouldn't lock and unlock, and then of course the battery would consistently die because the gauges wouldn't shut off, therefore killing it within a day or two, and they just said to heck with it, parked it, and after four years of it parked in the driveway, they gave it to charity. And now we bought it and fixed it for $9. There you have it, JR Garage Special, $9 fix, oil change, and now it is completely ready to go. And of course, $10 worth of cleanup materials and a couple days of elbow grease. Yep, it's fully good to go. Oh yeah, and here's the old one, by the way. I just really got annoyed with it and it wasn't coming out, so I just kind of like smashed it out, pried it out with a screwdriver, and here you go. So this little ignition switch doodah was screwing everything up and cheap aftermarket you don't have to code it nine bucks on amazon heck yeah